the contest of the evening. Tommy Core against Sam Story at light middleweight, a fight that easily lived up to the expectations. A repeat of last year's final indeed, that time Tommy Core won on points. We join this year's version right at the start. And this the final of the 1983 light middleweight championship has been billed, well, as the one that everyone wants to see. The defending champion in the light pass, Tommy Corr from the Cano Club, Paul Island, County Tyrone, against the man he beat in last year's final, Sammy Story in the dark vest from the Holy Family Club in Belfast. The noise in the Ulster Hall for this contest gives you some idea of the support for these two men. A couple of busloads and several dozen carloads have come up from Coal Island to support Tommy Corr. Well, of course, Sammy Story from the Belfast Holy Family Club will have most of the local backing. Well, they've waited for a year to have a go at each other once again. Paul got it last year. Only unanimous points decision and went on to take the best box award for the tournament. That young Sammy Story has done himself nothing but good since then. So again, it's two southpaws. And Paul Carson brings them together in the middle of the ring. Paul, a lot more experience than Story, but in the last year, Sammy Story has matured beyond all recognition and is certainly I suspect not going to let himself get caught as he did here a year ago in the first round when he had to take a standing point against Tommy Corr. Oh, that's a great right hand from Corr. Well, I spoke too soon. I spoke too soon. History really repeating itself. And Sammy Story, a confident start from him, but walking into a cracker of a right hand from Tommy Corr, the defending champion. And Sammy Story grins. A very brave grin indeed, and again, Thor gets him with that right hand. By all accounts, Tommy Corr, well, he's been training very hard for this. He's boxed just once since he came back from Brisbane. But by the looks of things, he's been doing an awful lot of sparring. So coming up to the end of the first round, and Tommy Corr, having had the man he beat in last year's final, Sammy Story, on his backside on the canvas. And Sam Story just causing Tommy Corr to miss. A tremendous first round. Everything we'd have expected for the second meeting in the Ulster light middleweight final between Tommy Corr and Sammy Story. Just as it was in the first round last year, Sammy Story starting off quite confidently, but then walking into a real gem of a right hand from Tommy Corr and finding himself on the seat of the pants in his corner. Second attack, third and final round. Well, a tremendous ovation from the crowd as they anticipate, as we do, the third and final round of the light middleweight. 1983 final. The 71-kilogram men in the white vest, the defending champion Tommy Corr from Cano, Cole Island. And in the dark vest, the man he beat in last year's final, Sammy Story from Belfast Holy Family. Story down, took an eight count in the first round, had a much better second round. Or much more experienced, stronger, but taking a left hand from Sam Story, but using that experience and footwork to get himself out of the way. Tommy Core for the second time in the contest, getting a warning about his head from referee Paul Carson. Two cautions then for Tommy Corr. 
both of these boxers superbly fit and trained exceptionally hard and for the past year I suspect that there's been nothing else on their minds than this night this the right hand from Sammy Story as he was going backward and again the right hand so for two south balls which often don't produce a particularly good contest this one certainly is much better than expectations and again Sammy Story just relaxing a little bit much and Tommy Core coming through with his right hand again the right hand from Core uh, tipping right hand coming across the left hand part of Sam Story's face and again that right hand from Tommy Core so into the last minute then of the third and final round of the light middleweight final this piece of footwork from Sam Story but Tommy Core once again showing that experience he's boxed much better in this third round than he did in the second. We're coming into the closing minutes of the contest. And who's it going to be? Will Tommy Core hold on to his Ulster Senior Light Middleweight title? Or will Sammy Story succeed where he failed last year? Well, what about that? Two very tired gentlemen indeed. And has Tommy Core done enough to hold on to his title? The Oscar Senior Light Middleweight Champion for 1983 and holder of the RUC Cup right back in the center of the city it's the Australian who's got all the support and if Tommy Core keeps that sort of thing up he may need it Tommy Core 20 years old who went to the world championships in Munich earlier this year and came back with a bronze medal a marvelous performance for a young boxer against the toughest opposition in the world now let's see how he can make out in these Commonwealth Games David Hall, 23 years old, comes from Collins Creek in New South Wales. And this is his second appearance in the Commonwealth Games. He boxed in Edmonton, Canada, four years ago as a welterweight then, one weight down from this, and got outpointed in his opening contest by a Tanzanian. He had a great slugging match with him, I remember it. Number 95, Tommy Core of Northern Ireland. Core comes from the Clonneau Club in Tyrone, from Cole Island, County Tyrone. Good punch, good right hand from Core, hooking ferociously. Beautiful left downstairs as well. And he's got all going here. This Australian is having to soak up some almighty blows in this opening round. One minute to go. And Core's made a brilliant start. of Ghana, former boxer himself. <laughs> well, Hall hasn't really come into this very much in the first round, and Kors dominated it, made a good start. But 
four being forced in the closing seconds to take one or two punches, much to the delight of the Brisbane crowd. And made to pay for it. What a good opening round for Cor. And <laughs> could hardly get to the corner fast enough. Fell onto the stool, into the arms of Jerry Storey. Now, the last three minutes of this good light middleweight contest between Tommy Corr of New Northern Ireland and the Australian in green and gold, David Hall from Collins Creek, New South Wales. The Battle of South Paws. Cor having a good first round, the second being much more closely contested. Now what's going to happen in the third? Northern Ireland brought a team of seven with them. Two men have gone already. Australia have a full team of 11. They've lost one man. Hall's right lead has proved troublesome to Paul in the last couple of rounds. And Cor is not having quite the success he had in the first. Paul needs to work hard in this last round. Both of them now beginning to feel the strain of this. It's been hard going. Both felt each other's best punches. Cor looks to me to be lasting the pace a little better. And I remember in Edmonton how Hall tired towards the end. In fact, he was forced to take a standing count in the third round against a Tanzanian. Great encouragement for Hall here to come in and have a go. But he's looking tired. Arms dropping. And Cor is moving faster and sharper. <laughs> Only a few seconds left. And Cor has come through with a better work rate at the finish. He's lasted the pace better. That was a good contest, a hard contest. They fall into each other's arms at the end. And that looks to me as though Tommy Cor of Northern Ireland, who stayed the course a little better, may well have taken that decision and put himself through to the last eight of the light medals. He did, actually. It was a unanimous decision for Cor. I bet you were wondering where old Alex Dixon and Mr. Uliata for Western two British boxers, uh, Tommy Cor of Northern Ireland, and Paul Lewis of Wales. We join the third round now with Harry Carpenter. Now the final three minutes of this light middleweight quarterfinal, an all-United Kingdom clash. Paul Lewis of Wales against Tommy Cor of Northern Ireland with the Scottish referee, Mr. Hendry. Well, Lewis has had to take a standing count in the second round, so Cor's got the edge on him. And the winner here will have to face the Canadian favourite, Sean O'Sullivan, in the semi-finals. And Cor's got another good right hand in there, stinging right, and it pulled Lewis up absolutely in his tracks. still get the feeling this could have quite a dramatic ending. There's so many hard punches being exchanged. Anything could happen now. Yeah. 
Battle of Southpaws. Good left from Cor. of course, the last of the Welshmen in this competition. There are only two sent. The other one, Jonathan Alsop, is already gone. So we're coming into the closing stages now of this hard-fought battle between these two United Kingdom Southpaws. And this is the second standing count over Lewis. He had one in the second, and now one almost at the finish. And that would seem to me to settle it. Well, there can't be any reasonable doubt that Kaur has made it into the semi-finals, and he's gonna take a medal. But full marks to the way Paul Lewis stood up to that. Two standing counts and was still battling away at the finish. Indeed, a unanimous uh, points decision there for Tommy Corr. Absolutely sure of a medal, as Harry was saying. Well, another good bout. Uh, One of the most eagerly awaited of all the semi-finals, the light middleweight division, Sean O'Sullivan, the Canadian star, against Northern Ireland's Tommy Corr, who won a bronze medal at this year's World Championships. Sean O'Sullivan has caused a lot of comment uh, here in Brisbane. 20-year-old Canadian, 1981 Canadian champion, a member of Canada's World Cup team and a winner in the World Cup a couple of years ago. And a winner this year for Canada against West Germany. Generally regarded in the Canadian quarters as uh, a cert gold medalist. Well, we shall see. Here he faces Tommy Kaur, who's only 20, same age as O'Sullivan. Southpaw from Northern Ireland, from County Tyrone. Core really achieved something remarkable this year in the World Championships in Munich when he came and threw and won a bronze and was only beaten in the end in the semi final by the great Alexander Koshkin, Olympic silver medalist and European champion from Russia. Stopped Core in two rounds. Well, we've hardly had much chance to see O'Sullivan in action here. He's been pretty destructive. He stopped a man from Zimbabwe in the third round and then uh, forced a man from Guyana to retire in the first round with just two punches. 65 seconds was all his second contest lasted. And he's got core in trouble on the ropes. And core comes back with his own right hand. They're going to feel each other's punches here. There's no doubt about that. Now Sullivan has a very neat way of slipping punches. He's uh, got the old style of just moving the head side to side and letting punches go over his shoulder. Beginning to punish Corp. And Corp looking in some trouble and takes an eight-second rest from the referee on his feet. So Sullivan makes the first... the first big success. Core trying to fight back. Not sure whether throwing punches with Sullivan is a good idea or not. Might be better to try and box him. He's in trouble again. He's got a cut on his nose and mouth. Second standing count. 
Still only the first round. There's the bell. And O'Sullivan shows what a destructive puncher he can be. Look at that nose of Thorns. That has been torn by the savage punching of Sean O'Sullivan, the 20-year-old Canadian star. Here is a very hard-punching young man indeed. He lets them go like rockets. Look at that. That's what probably did the nose. Almost forced core out of the ring. And again, action for that first round. Vicious right uppercut. That, in fact, I think that right uppercut, I believe, was the punch that might even have broken Kaur's nose. He's in some tr trouble, that. So a punishing first round for Tommy Kaur of Northern Ireland comes out to face Sean O'Sullivan of Canada in the red trunks again. This is unlikely to go the distance. The winner here will go to the final to meet Nick Crooms of England, the Royal Navy man. He's got a very fine assortment of punches, O'Sullivan. And I think... Uh, the referee wants the doctor to have a look at uh, this nose, of course. It seems to, be, seems to be cut either side of the nose, as well as some damage to the nose. But he says Cor can go on, and so the young man from Coal Island, County Tyrone, carries on. Full of bravery, Cor. He's going to need it. Now, Sullivan is going to show no mercy. Vicious left hooker, Sullivan. Good punch from Core. Got one back in. And this crowd rising to Core's bravery as he fights back in the second. Keep the punches up. Mr. Hendry of Scotland. O'Sullivan shows a remarkable assortment of jabs, hooks, and uppercuts. This is a savage contest. And another standing count. The third, crowd don't agree with it. Just under a minute of the second round remaining. And still Cor comes back in and fights back. He's the hardest punching amateur I've seen for some time. And Cor turned away and went to his knees. He, he took a punch right up the middle. He's totally winded and he won't be able to beat the count. Well, he has, but he's going to be counted out on his feet. It's all over. The Scottish referee counts him out. It was a brave try by Cor, but there was no sense in letting him go on. That last little flurry of punches from O'Sullivan was absolutely appallingly destructive. And the punch that hit him in the stomach, knocked every bit of strength and resistance out of him. That was the one. Oh, my word. And a right as well, and he just turned away and fell to his knees, all the breath knocked out of his body. Poor Tommy Corr, but he'll get a bronze medal to take home to join the one he won in the World Championships earlier this year. All. And that's a good left hand. Oh. Very close international so far between Ireland and England. Scottish boxers doing well. 
Well, it's very important that they should win this one. If Tommy Corr can win this one, it would mean an awful lot. So far, there's very little separating them. Corr started well. But Riley is about to progress and seems to be finding his range a little bit better. Tommy Corr looks as if he's running out of steam now in this the second round. And he connects with one beauty, a really cracking right out of the gym. And it's turned the contest right around. And it's brought the stadium crowd alive here. Just as it seemed the contest was slipping away from him. Crack, he landed with one big one. That's what's made Tommy Corr so popular. He's got the big punch. And he can turn a contest right around with one good blow. How can he repeat that again? Works your way to the body. Well, this is a surprising contest. Earlier part of this round, it looked as if it was slipping away from the grass of Tommy Carr. And with one blow, he comes back. And there he's back again with another cracking right hand. Well, this is quite a contest now with one more round left and it's anybody's contest this one at light middleweight <laughs> this could be the deciding round the final round of this light middleweight contest Tommy Corr for Ireland Steve Riley for England Tommy Corr had a good first round second round it seemed to be slipping away from him and then he landed with a couple of big punches at the end of that second round and uh, early on, he gets two of the big one. Tommy Carr, this hard-hitting Clano County Tyrone, light middleweight. He's been out of boxing for a few weeks through injury and missed the last couple of internationals. 